So it's World at War 85 here by Lock and Load Publishing, Storming the Gap, and um, I'm on this scenario called Iron Horse, Iron Spear, a US NATO counterattack into um, some Russian defenders, which in turn one went really rather well for the US, engaged this uh, force down here pretty effectively, and then in turn two it all went wrong, and um, the Russians got cards, the Americans didn't get any activations with two of their formations and took some really rather unpleasant casualties. Very unlucky to do so. As I say, the chances of the Russians getting both their formations activated and the Americans only getting one of theirs and two not activating at all was really very slim. So, so that's what this um, sort of jet pull chit pull card draw activation sometimes throws up and as a result we've got the end of operations card here with two USHQs on it um, because they didn't get to act last turn. A um, bit late now for Fox who are down to a Bradley, um, a self-propelled mortar and a disrupted tow jeep um, but we'll see what they can do. Um, so let's uh, see what happens this turn. I think if the T 80s, the Soviet T-80s get on the board before the Americans have a chance to act. They're going to be in all. They could be in all sorts of trouble because they're two of their three M1 um, Abrams platoons are currently uh, disrupted, and the infantry they've got is looking um, very susceptible to being blown up in its transports, and the, Ameri um, the T-80s might rush them. So let's see what happens here. And it's a battlefield event straight off. Let's see what that is then. Let's roll two uh, dice. Just grab a couple of d6 from up over there. We get a seven, which means we flip over and roll on the friction table. And we get a five. Let's grab the charts then. See what happens. So that's the events table. On the seven, we get the friction table, I'm fairly sure. Seven, no battlefield event. Instead of all on the friction table, right? On the friction table, a five says, friendly fire, one side. Friendly fire isn't. Poor training and lax internal coordination combined for deadly results. Your opponent chooses any of your units on the map, then your opponent rolls a d6. On a one to three, the fire for effect is checked and there is no effect. On a four or five, your opponent places the fire for effect mark on the chosen hex and executes an off-board artillery HE strike of strength three to four. On a six, your opponent places the fire for effect marker on the chosen hex and executes an off-board artillery MLRS strike of strength three, three. Once any strike is resolved, draw the next card to continue the ops phase. Okay. So we choose a side and then the opponent of that side gets to place some friendly fire FFE. Okay, so we're choosing the side. We roll a D6, one to three, it's NATO. Four to six, it's the Russians. And it's a three, it's NATO. So I think this means, so side affected is NATO. Your opponent I presume that means that the opponent of NATO, yeah, chooses any of your units on the map and rolls a fire for effect. Okay, well, so the Russians are going to put a fire for effect down on this um, stack of infantry and transports here. Roll a dice. They get a two. Um... On a one to three, there's no effect. Okay, so that was a lucky escape. No friendly fire hitting the US there. And we'll move on to the next card, which is end of operations. Next card is, okay, the American um, infantry. Okay, let's get moving then. Well, I rolled through turn three pretty quickly, actually. <clears throat> here in um, Iron Horse, Iron Spear, scenario in World of War 85. And um, the T-80s came on. Um, 
and took up positions in these woods and up on this hill line where they can fire across this valley into the Americans on this hill and are exploiting their 12 range whereas the Abrams have got 11 range so they're trying to exploit that, that slight range advantage but they are about 12 away 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 to there, 11 to there, 12 to there this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10, 11 to there so they're just out, out of range of each other but I think they've got a range advantage against this guy and possibly against this guy as well you can see a lot of disruptions the uh, Americans failed to undisrupt either of their M1 Abrams platoons which was a colossal pain for them and you can see this guy here is disrupted as well down over here they did manage to reorganize their um, tow jeeps just in time because the Russians are kind of swarming forward hoping to um, mug the um, Bradleys here and then get at the um, mortars and um, so those these tow jeeps have now got a, at least got a line of fire across this hill and can and can defend those mortars but it's all looking a bit sticky um, so the Americans are desperately in need of a good turn really um, something to go right I should probably have used the HQ to drop some artillery into here um, and with the T-80s on the board I could I could also think about maybe dropping some smoke somewhere um, to try and block their lines of fire maybe in here so that we can advance up um, yeah or maybe into the town here and then across there so that we can still shoot at these and those they can't shoot past us but anyway I need to have a look at perhaps some smoke although it may be a bit too early for that yet because we're not quite ready to advance with all these disruptions around so, um, yeah, that's the state of play. Let's have a look at the first card then that we're getting off. And it is OK. It is the M1 Abrams platoons. So the three M1 Abrams platoons, which are here, here and here, two of which are disrupted. I think we're leaving the HQ where it is. We'll try and undisrupt that platoon. Um, and they've got an 11 and they failed again. And the other one has got a seven and has undisrupted, but the, the platoon under here has just been disrupted the, ever since it got hit. That's terrible. And it's been rolling on nines or less with the HQ with it as well. That's really disappointing. Okay, the HQ is also going to drop some artillery, some high explosive artillery in here, because we've got three missions so we'll put a fire for effect mission in there. We'll drop down our number of um, we'll drop down our number of missions on the track there to two. We'll roll for scatter, and we won't scatter. So we'll have a three four effect. So fours to hit with three dice, and that is nothing. Okay. Well, we'll do another one of those because uh, we can fire two artillery missions so we'll roll again for scatter and we won't scatter and we'll roll three hits with four we'll roll three dice hitting on fours and that's a bit more like it so that's three hits in there okay um infantry i believe get um, I need to look up what they save. I think they get saves for um, terrain um, and concealment. And they have concealment because they're in concealment terrain. <clears throat> and they are not not um, ops complete. They are, well, they have all the prerequisites for concealment, I believe. Um, Oh no, no, they can't be able to complete, it's the start of a new turn. Um, so they have the prerequisites for concealment, which and they'll get two dice. So they'll have three dice. And I think they're saving on fives or sixes. I think that's correct. Um, so let's go for it. 
and they've got two sixes. Wow, that's a really good save. So that means they're simply disrupted <coughs> from that artillery strike. And um, now the Abrams have got some thinking to do about what to shoot up. Just come into turn five here. And um, the Americans have got some problems, um, basically because this Soviet formation, the um, 2 247th, um, had the last activation of the previous turn <clears throat> and uh, we've come into this turn the T-80s didn't get an activation last turn and neither did the American infantry um, formation uh, up on this hill but uh, this gold Soviet uh, formation was the last to act and it basically started to overrun this fox the remains of this fox cavalry regiment armoured cav here and now it's come out as the first card in the new turn, which means it's getting back-to-back -back moves. And it's got an HQ here with um, an HQ here with uh, on a BMP, fully loaded with missiles, waiting to um, unleash them into this Bradley here and the HQ. It's got um, these guys have got no missiles, but they have still got a gun on them with two dice and three range which is enough to have a pop at this um, mortar self-propelled mortar here they've got infantry which is threatening to come up and start assaulting stuff up here uh, they've got tanks creeping around ready to try and come and take out that tow jeep although that'll be unpleasant but they may have to take a tow shot um, and then they've got more um, BMPs moving up here and more infantry and it's uh, they've got infantry reloading missiles in here It's all going to be very unpleasant indeed I'm just going to ro roll to reload these missiles because if that happens that's going to be very nasty so Let's uh, roll that Yeah, they've reloaded their missiles on a six So they've got those saggers back as well and um, let's roll to undisrupt this guy. Nobody's out of command. And it's all going very well for them. That six undisrupts this guy as well. Um, and so they've now got pretty much everything. They have taken some losses, but they've got now pretty much everything. So let's take our best shot first. Let's take the HQ shot into the Bradley. So we've got... Um, Oh, he's not ops complete, obviously. He's got three dice on fours. He's got five dice on fours, and he's at point blank range, one, two, three, which is the minimum range for these Saga missiles. But that's a minus one on hit number, so he's got five dice on threes. Um, and that is only two hits only two hits against the Bradley okay and the Bradley save is again I didn't take that off is on sixes I believe on the bottom left there which isn't great he's got one dice on the sixes he's got a dice for the woods that's two dice he's got a dice for concealment that's oh no he's got enemy unit adjacent to him so he's not got concealment but he has got a dice for anti-tank guided weapons firing into woods so he's got three dice he's taken two hits he needs sixes he gets a six he takes one hit and is just disrupted Well, I think that was about as good as it was going to get for him on that shot. <clears throat> the bad news for him is he's about to take another one because there's one coming in from these infantry here as well. That's at range four, which is also point blank range, but he hasn't got the two bonus dice for the HQ. So he's got three dice on threes to hit. And that is two hits and he's rolling so he's trying to defend two hits i'll keep those dice there 
And the same thing again, he's rolling a dice for his light armour, a dice for the trees and a dice for trees firing anti, in, in anti-tank guided weapons firing into trees. So you've got three dice, he needs sixes. He hasn't got anything this time and being disrupted. He's just taking two hits and is destroyed. So the HQ goes in the suppressed HQ's box and this guy comes off and is now wreckage like that. And he's ops complete. And we're on a bit of a mopping up exercise here. I'll have a think about whether I want to run the risk of charging those tow jeeps. Um, I don't know if I need to. Um, I think I should. I can probably just work some infantry through the um, through the woods to take them out. Uh, I will have a shot at this mortar with the BMP though. Two dice on sixes into this guy here. Let's just mark him up as complete. So two dice on sixes. And he's got no hits. Okay. Let's have a look at other moves then that we can make just to work um, work our way through these last couple of... Well, actually, one interesting idea we've got is we've got a couple of T... Um, 62's here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, we could shoot into the back of these M1 Abrams with some volley fire from where we are, and we would have um, the two units firing together, volley fire gives us an extra dice, we could have four dice hitting on fives into those Abrams. We're going to do that, we're going to volley, volley fire into the back of the M1 Abrams to try and give them another problem to think about. So four dice hitting on fives, and that's one hit into those Abrams, and I think they're rolling four dice in defence because they've got no defensive terrain. We're on a hill, they're on a hill. Um, so that will more than that's more than enough to, to see off the, the shots that they've just taken. Okay. Um, I'll just have a think about what to do with this infantry and we will move on. But that's another Bradley Down and Fox um, regiment has fallen pretty much fallen apart now. Well, I've got to the end of turn five here in Iron Horse, Iron Spear, World of War 85. You can see that the Americans dropped their smoke mission in to block off a lot of the fire from these T-80s <clears throat> behind the city. And then basically charged. We tried to get as much forward as we could. You can see a reduced um, M1 Abrams in there, more M1 Abrams in here, another reduced one under that HQ. Um, infantry piling up and, um, you know, we're... We're pushing, we've actually got some infantry under under this smoke actually taking our first. No, it's not a town hex, but we're, we're right on the edge of the city that we need to take. Um, and that's just as well because over here it's complete disaster. We've just got the, um, the mortars had to retreat and we've got the jeep, the tow jeep, but you know, uh, there's not much happening for us. But since this is our objective, um, this is what we're going to focus on. And if the, um, the the Soviets want to try and get, uh, you know, into the action from over here, then they can. So um, it's all still looking pretty difficult to take, but um, uh, we've at least pushed up and made a, made a showing. So I need to flip this smoke because it's only around for the for next turn and then it's all going to go again. Um, and we'll see what happens in turn six. The other thing that uh, can happen at the beginning of turn six is the Russians, and I mustn't for, mustn't forget to do this, is they will want to um, try and hand this 
Sagger off to the um, the other infantry, the undamaged infantry. Even though it's got a missile reloading on it, I don't see any anything in the rules that suggests we can't do that. So I'll just make sure that gets done because that's part of the end of turn phase doing that. So uh, I just don't want to forget. Um, yeah, not much around disrupted at the moment because most things have been blown up. The um, last of the T. Uh, 55s got um, punished by the Abrams. Um, this thing here, this uh, BTR-60, survived a point-blank shot from some M1 Abrams, a platoon of M1 Abrams somehow. Um, it must have had a very good position on this hill and has actually been fending off um, attacks from these two M113s as well. Uh, oh, yes, it's quite funny the way you go from these enormous sort of six dice um, attacks with you know M1 Abrams with HQs and T80s and tow missiles and then you get like a one dice attack needing a six to hit and it's all very unimpressive indeed and they stand there slugging away effectively doing nothing at all to each other anyway turn um, that was the end of was that the end of turn six did I say god I really can't remember whether I moved the turn hmm marker forward or not. Anyway, we'll call that the end of turn six. Um, I don't think it's, I don't think the turn count is going to be what decides this game. So we'll push forward into turn seven and um, yeah, see what happens next. Who else at War 85, Iron Horse, Iron Spear, the third scenario. I'm coming into turn eight here. I'm actually, all I seem to be doing now is sort of turn roundups rather than focusing on any particular action. But I guess the what happens is that <clears throat> the early action sort of defines the shape of how things are going to go and, and then you play out those those key decisions as to how the Americans are going to proceed and attack and so on. Um, and it's harder and harder to, to identify any sort of particular attacks or defences or whatever that are going to be critical. Um, over here on the, uh, what would this be, the west map edge, um, you can see the remnants of this Fox Regiment here, just a, you know, just a tow jeep with the HQ and, uh, and a, some self-propelled mortars. They didn't get attacked last turn because the Soviet um, card didn't come out, so they got respite last turn, but they're just hunkered down waiting for the worst, basically, because they've got this huge Soviet formation in front of them and no real way to impact the outcome. What they are doing, though, is tying up that huge Soviet formation to prevent it from coming over here, where the action is. And you can see the smoke has now dissipated, the Americans laid down, but the Americans have pushed into the city they're trying to take. They've got infantry in here now, um, covered by both the city and some wrecks. They've got more infantry ready to advance in here. They've got some disrupted troop carriers in here. These took a shot from some T-80s and won't last long against the next shot, but they have taken the city. Um, and they've got more stuff ready to advance in, um, but they are facing um, a whole five sections of five platoons of T-80s, which is unpleasant, as well as some infantry that are going to be quite hard to dig out of here. So, um, not a foregone conclusion, but the Americans have made a showing here of, of pushing into the city and trying to take it, and have taken two of the five hexes with a third sort of clear, assuming they don't take devastating fire from the infantry. And we have to remember as well that the Saggers from the infantry is at too short a range now to affect the Abrams, so the Abrams can probably push in here um, without without too much trouble as long as there's infantry in there as well. So they probably need to be inf infantry and Abrams combined to withstand an assault by um, Soviet infantry. Uh, but yeah, that's um, that's the situation. Um, so a tense couple of turns coming up to see if the Americans can actually take the uh, the city hexes that they need. I think this one across the river with the T-80s in it could be could be tr tricky, given the amount of effort it's likely to take to get in here. Um, but we shall see. So turn eight. Um, I think I've done all the prep, so it's just a case of flipping the first card and seeing what comes out. Um, and we've got we've got the Soviets 
in here who I don't think have got anything much to do they've got no reason um, I suppose I suppose they could try assaulting this infantry given that they've got to try and defend somehow or they could just shoot at it um, or they could try assaulting into here and getting rid of these guys and splitting their infantry up between two two hexes thing is that that's a bit of a waste of time because <coughs> excuse me <coughs> oh dear bit of sneezing going on um, that's a bit of a waste of time because um, I reckon these T-80s will take these guys out um, and so it's a sort of where if we if we take them out with infantry there's n pretty much nothing for the T-80s to then do so um, yeah let's not do that let's stay put then let's stay put and keep our powder dry and get ready to um, attack things that that move closer to us so i think those those soviets are just going to stay put actually and we'll move on to the next card and it's a battlefield event let's roll a couple of dice and see what we get we get an eight and that is a one side intensify their fire activate one friendly formation for a modified formation impulse um, Okay, so one to three it's NATO, four to six it's the Soviets, and it's a two. NATO are going to get an, a free activation here. Um, and let's see what it says. Uh, um, eight. Your troops intensify their fire. Activate one friendly formation from modified formation impulse. When actions occur in the impulse sequence, units... Of your activated formation may only execute direct fire, indirect fire, or onboard artillery strike, not move and fire. So we've got a free activation with which we can essentially do um, uh, fire. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Um, right. Uh, yeah, the question is what we've got to. I suppose the Abrams uh, might have fire opportunities, possibly, I don't know what, there aren't many lines of fire between the Abrams and the T-80s because um, this um, cultivated ground cuts um, blocks line of sight along um, uh, from close, uh, from, from the same level and up on the hill here um, the town and these woods are blo are creating um, blind hexes behind the city, so um, we deliberately moved forward very close so that the T-80s couldn't shoot us and so that the Sagas were at too short a range to shoot us. So now I have to think about whether anyone at all uh, has got any shots. But anyway, we've got this free action. Well, earlier in the game I had a situation where I think where uh, uh, M1 Abrams was rolling... <laughs> like five dice needing fours to save against a, a hit and roll four ones and a three and got blown up back down over here and it was all a bit unlucky well with this um battlefield friction event this high rate of fire i decided to um activate our infantry on our u.s infantry because we got some good shots with um tow missiles off this hill into the t-80s and we've also got an attack here um so I've moved the HQ back to support this um, tow armed infantry on the hill here because that's quite hard to hit as well. And they fired with a bonus two dice. So four dice on fours, six dice on fours over here, 13 range straight into this HQ on the hill here. Um, they needed fours to hit with six dice and um, that was the roll. <laughs> uh, so when your luck's against you, it's against you. But when your luck's with you, it really is with you. They got five fours and a six there. <laughs> and so they've got um, six hits on the um, T-80s 
I think the T80s could struggle uh, to replicate that, but we'll give them a shot at it, shall we? That's what the game is. So they have got four dice um, to defend, and they need fives. They don't have any um, terrain here to help, so they've got no forest. They're not on a higher level, so they've got no terrain bonuses at all, so they stay with four dice. They do have reactive armor, so they've got four dice needing fours. Um, so even if they roll four successes here, they'll still take two hits. Um, but let's see. Well, they've managed um, a creditable two saves there. That means they take four hits and are instantly destroyed by the toes. Boom is all we can say to that. So that HQ is reduced and then moved into the suppressed HQ box for the Soviets. Um, this bunch of T-80s is reduced to rubble, <coughs> smoking rubble. I think as well what happens is um, that if you, if you have more than three unsaved um, hits in a hex that you have a chance or may start fires so I've got to look at that because there may be a fire that started in that hex um, and what else needs doing oh I need to write, make the ammo roll for the infantry they've got a minus two because of the HQ so they need a nine or less um, to retain the tow missile capability and they've got a seven there so they are not um, missile reloading, they are fine, they are ops complete, but I'll just look up this um, fires situation, because, and it may be important because this is a really nice um, spot for the T-80s because it gives them, you know, lines of fire across here, good lines of fire, and so a, a blaze in there might not be the best thing in the world for them if it means they can't move other units in. Let's see. And just to wrap that up, yes, I was correct that three or more hits in a direct or indirect um, attack do has, have a chance to cause rubble and fires and other things, but only in city, town, woods, light woods, light jungle, or jungle hexes or terrain designated in the module scenario rules. But that's a clear hilltop, and so we don't have a chance of um, rubble or fires and stuff there. So it's just um, just some smoking wreckage and we continue onwards with um, a tow attack by this unit into some more T-80s I think. I don't think we, I think the city will create dead hexes to prevent us from hitting these. Um, the question is whether we can see these guys. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. They're certainly within range. And the lack of trees and forest would make our tow missiles much more effective. And I think we may have to shoot at them. So I'll just check line of sight and then give it a go. Well, we've reached a fairly critical point in the, um, in the game. Here in turn 8, it's the American infantry on the move. And they have... Um, not managed to fire out of here successfully but um, and they had some troop carriers in here blown up but moved some more in um, so that, and they are currently in here and assaulting into the objective marker A and this is the assault that's going on we've got an HQ an infantry platoon and an infantry carrier all going in and we are facing an HQ an infantry platoon with some saggers which won't put, make, play any effect and a reduced infantry platoon and so as far as I can tell what we've got on the American side is two dice on fives sorry we're using the assault numbers bottom right two dice on fours but we're increased by two for the HQ so four dice on fours and uh, one dice on fives and with the assaults happening in a city so we've got a bonus dice for that so we can have five dice on fours for these infantry and a dice on fives but over on this side we've got the same thing we've got two dice on fours increased by two four dice on fours in a city five dice on fours 
and I think these guys will have two dice on fives. So I think we've got five dice on fours this side and five dice on fours this side, one on fives, two on fives. I think that's the case. I don't know um, whether this infantry also gets a bonus dice for fighting in a city. It may well do, in which case this would be three dice on fives against one dice on fives. But um, the, the rules, again... <clears throat> are a little bit sketchy, certainly in the rule book that I've got, in terms of a lot of the rules assume that you've got one unit fighting one unit, and when you've got stacks of units, so if we've got stacks of infantry, do we get the bonus dice on both stacks, or one stack, or what? Um, again, it says increase your units to sort firepower dice by your HQ's command bonus, but is that one or both, or uh, usually it's one, so I'm assuming that it's one because an HQ is normally stacked with a unit. But it's not entirely clear how... Um, um, it's not entirely clear how um, uh, how the, the city bonuses are allocated. I've got a feeling that it should be for both of these infantry units. I've got a feeling this should get a plus one and this should get a plus one. So anyway, yes, let's do that then. Five dice on fours, a dice on fives, five dice on fours, three dice on fives. And um, so this, it, but the, and this is about as good as the Americans can get here uh, right now. And it's quite tough. So um, let's roll some dice then. So the attackers first. So they've got the, the main infantry platoon is rolling five dice, needing fours to hit. Um, yeah, let's give this a go. And that's three hits. Three hits. Okay. And uh, then they've got one dice needing fives to hit. And that's four four hits and there are no saves here so that's just four four hits on the on the Soviets and the Soviets are rolling five dice needing fours to hit and that's two hits and then they're rolling Three dice needing fives to hit. Let's grab some more red dice from over here. Three dice needing fives to hit. And that's one more. That's three hits. And this looks like complete mutual destru destruction here. So four hits to apply to the Russians. Three hits to apply to the Americans. It says here that um, if there's an... The hits are now applied by both sides. Each unit in a stack receives one hit before taking another. If there are an odd number of hits, roll a d6 on a 1 to 3. The top unit receives a, sit, a, a hit on the 4 to 6. The bottom unit does. Okay, if the defender is not eliminated and the attacker did not inflict more hits, the attacker must retreat. Um, if the defender is not eliminated and receives more hits than it inflicted, it retreats one hex. So um, the Soviets have received four hits here and the, and the Americans three. So the Russians are going to, going to retreat. And it's we have to apply the hits to each stack before um, one at a time. So what it looks like to me is that we will get a disrupted on there. And a disrupted on there. That's two hits. And then the third hit will flip this infantry unit over. And the fourth hit will kill this infantry unit. So the, um, the Soviets are left with one... ...with one disrupted infantry like that. Because of the hit on the infantry we'll have to roll to see what happens to the HQ. So we'll roll the we'll roll an orange dice for his HQ and on a 
I think it's on a one to three he's um, on a one to three he's unaffected and on a four to six he's reduced um, so we've got a one and he's unaffected and so this lot now has to retreat now here's another interesting thing is that you have to retreat into one of the three hexes away from the entry hex of the attacking force the attacking force came out of here and we're defending in here so that means one of these three hexes you're not allowed to retreat into a hex that's adjacent to an enemy so that one's not allowed i assume you're not allowed to retreat across a prohibited hex site such as a river i assume which would mean this is the only viable hex because it's got a bridge but that's adjacent to an enemy now Normally in most tactical games it would it would start spelling this out saying that this doesn't um, exert that sort of um, uh, reliance uh, or that doesn't inflict that kind of a destruction due to failure to retreat because of the the river line here. In other words, it, the rules would say whether or not it was possible to recruit, retreat across this bridge made possible by the prohibited terrain of the river here. But this game doesn't do any of that. It simply says that the um, defender can't retreat into a hex that's adjacent to an enemy unit. And that's the only... Via nor does it tell us whether you can retreat across, um, retreat across the river. So that's all a bit of a mess um, in terms of the rules. A retreating unit cannot enter an enemy occupied hex, a hex adjacent to an enemy unit. A hex that is already occupied. A hex that is already occupied to the stacking limit by a friendly stack. A hex it is prohibited from entering by the TS TEC. Okay, so it does tell us that we can't cross the uh, river. Um, so we could only go across the bridge. So the question is whether across the river, in other words, prohibited by the TEC, counts as adjacent for the purposes of preventing retreat. And that is not clear. I may actually go and look that up. Um, uh, so let's just finish this off and apply some hits here. So we would, we've got three hits to apply here, so essentially we're going to have a disrupted unit there, a disrupted unit there, and then we roll a dice, and on a one to three the top unit is uh, takes the next hit, and on the bottom one, uh, on a four to six the bottom one does, and we have got a five there. So the troop carrier here is now, um, is, is now reduced. Both of these are disrupted, and um, we're all sat in here. Uh, the question is about the retreat of this across the bridge or not. So I'm going to go and see if I can find an answer to that online. And just to finish this little commentary, the version 2.1 of the rules, and I'm, I've got version 2.0 here, 2.1 of the rules say that... Um, a retreating unit cannot enter a hex adjacent to an undisrupted enemy unit with an AP or HE value, which I suppose is more precise and clearer. This is an undisrupted American infantry with both an HE unit, one two five, what two two five, and an AP one two five, and therefore um, this is a prohibited hex for the retreat from the assault. So. This is prohibited by the river. This is prohibited because it's adjacent to an undisrupted American unit with an AP or HE value. In this case, it's a troop carrier with a, a rather crappy 215 HE value, but it is an HE value. So moving that up there was rather valuable to us. Otherwise, this group could have retreated back here. But we've done this assault correctly, as it turns out, and um, wiped this lot out. So, um, 
actually we can lose the disruption get rid of that um, I don't know what happens to the sagas I assume they're wiped out so all this lot is gone and that I think is the entirety of that um, infantry uh, regiment destroyed uh, yeah that's the whole lot gone the three tanks the two infantry the two carriers and the HQ I think that means we remove their card from the deck which would make sense since they can't play anymore so um, yeah that was a very successful assault by um, this HQ although they're all disrupted now in here they've taken the objective and they are ops complete and we're closing in on having completed our mission here if we're not careful we've, we've got to take um, this area from these T-80s um, but we're looking pretty good so um, let's just flip one more card but I think I'm then uh, going to call it a day and just come back oh we've got an end operations how many end operations have we had Oh, just the one. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's the end of turn eight then. And, um, oh no, it, it can't be the end of turn eight. Um, because I've done this the right, I've done this the wrong way around. I've put the end of opera operations on uh, and then taken their card out. So actually that would be that. And that would be that, and we should get the um, these guys. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what a what a screw up. Okay, so we've actually got the um, two two four seventh um, in instead in place of this the end operations card that I just drew, and um, groovy. They are going to get to act. Um, have to try and find out what we're going to do with them, and of course. I'll shuffle the end operations card in so that um, yeah we will then have the we'll be back in the correct place okay um, blah let's drop this HQ down in a way that keeps everything in command and uh, I'm gonna have a think about that and then go onward so we've got an assault out of this hex across the bridge into here to take the last part of the town that we need and then we'll have to hold the town for a couple of turns against any uh, attempts by the Soviets to, to take some of it back but as you can see we've got disrupted units around and we're attacking into a disrupted and reduced TAT which took some more uh, tow fire and didn't shrug it off this time and um, yeah, uh, they're being attacked by, assaulted by some infantry uh, led by an HQ. So this looks fairly one-sided, um, but it is across a bridge. So uh, on the American side, they've got two dice on fours with an HQ. That's four dice on fours. They're undisrupted infantry um, attacking vehicles which don't have infantry with them. That, that's a minus one to their hit number. That's four dice on threes. So that's pretty good so far. Um, but attacking across the bridge, um, they get a plus one to their to hit number, back to four dice on fours, and minus one dice. So that's three dice on fours. Okay, so the Americans have got three dice on fours. Let's see what they get. That's a pretty good roll, isn't it? That's three hits for the Americans. So the T-80s are going to be dead because <laughs> they can't take three hits. The um, Russians have got one dice on fours. And, um, oh, it's in a city, so they should have uh, got another dice. Mm. Okay, still got three hits. So um, the Russians have got one dice on fours and because it's across a bridge they get minus one on there to hit dice so they've got one dice on threes 
and that misses. Um, and so it's uh, all she wrote for the uh, T-80s. They are destroyed and the um, US move into this final city hex with the HQ and our ops complete. Wow. So on turn nine we've now accomplished the objectives of taking the city and I'll just do a quick look around to see whether the Soviets have any realistic chance of taking any of them back. Not with any of this stuff, I don't think. Especially since the approach is guarded by um, uh, infantry with toes and a tow um, armed launcher there. And the city's pretty strongly held and there's still some M1 Abrams up on the hill here slugging it out with the remainder of these T-80s and some more M1 Abrams amongst these wrecks on the edge of the river. So it's pretty well guarded now. Um, I'll see how the cards fall out, but I think this is done. Okay, well what actually happened was that the um, Abrams got another go, were able to put their HQ here and put three hits into the um, T-80s in here, which didn't manage a single save and got turned into wrecks. I rolled for fire and rubble, but there wasn't any. But what this means is that with two turns left, the Soviets have really only got a disrupted T-80 here and a disrupted reduced T-80 here to try and take back a, a city hex, um, which frankly is going to be far too well guarded. The Americans can move more infantry up in there with the HQ. They've got um, Abrams on overwatch. Um, they've got these things up here that they've just got too much firepower to defend it. And I don't think there's any point just um, going through the motions here. We've got a, we've got our outcome. The Americans have stormed forward and taken the city, even though they had one of their formations pretty much decimated from about turn three. But um, the rest of the uh, US force got this job done. The infantry combined with the Abrams to take the city that they needed. And um, it's been a fantastic game again. Re really good game. Um, yeah, it just creates some memorable moments, this, this system. I like it. It's easy going. It's friendly. It's very easy. There's very few table lookups. You can learn what you need to know really quite quickly. Occasionally I have to run through or just check the check the terrain effects chart or or just check for some modifiers on you know stuff but it's it's straightforward enough and like i said it creates memorable moments you know the death of the m1 abrams over here from a sort of rear shot from these um t62s um and uh the shot into the into the bradleys here which just decimated them but then equally you get this toe shot across the across the valley into into some T-80s here, six hits into those T-80s and the and the assaults in the city were pretty spectacular and um yeah you can see the terrain littered with with wrecks where things have been lit up. So super, super fun this. Um don't know what I'm gonna do next. I fancy another game of it to be honest. I fancy going into just straight into another scenario, maybe one without. Um, Russians and uh, Soviets and, and US, maybe we go into something with um, some other forces. This is US against Soviets, fire on the Kinsey Sea. Um, uh, uh, fire on the Kinsey Sea. Okay, well, this gives us some height, well, a hind to play with, maybe. Um, yeah. Um, okay. Well, I might try this. Well, let's have a look. Got ten T-80s, some BMPs with T-62s, and an infantry regiment. And then we've got three Abrams, some AH Cobras. Oh God! All kinds of anti-air and stuff kicking around. I'm going to play this. Um, Let's have a look at the, the one after it. Night Storm. I don't fancy playing. I bet this 
by the sounds of it, uses night rules in effect. Okay, I think I might play this fire on the Kinzig C, or I might jump forward into something that's got some something like this with some West Germans. Nah, let's play this fire on the Kinzig C and see how it goes. Anyway, that's been Iron Horse Iron Spear. Um, terrific stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, like I say, I'm going to play some more of this.